Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today I'm near Guelph, I'm catching up with Rob Miller from BASF. Rob, how's it going? Great. How are you doing, Bernard? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Hey, I want to talk weed control today. And, uh, you know, uh, we're in a, a soybean field here, first trifoliate. And, uh, you know, we're just finishing up that pre emerge herbicide and moving into to post emerge discussions. And I'm looking at this field. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we didn't get a pre emerge down here. No, we did. Definitely didn't get a pre emerge herbicide down here with residual, but we did get a burn down. Mm. And, uh, you know, without, you know, that burn down took out all that initial flush of weeds, but now we're seeing, you know, with the dry conditions, we're starting to see a lot of those weeds start to emerge. And now, you know, it's definitely been a lamb's quarters year. Yep. Lamb's quarters likes the drier conditions. It germinates a little bit shallower. And the thing is, you know, it's going to be tougher to control. Yeah. We're going to have to take a little bit more management strategies with yeah. uh, with some of those problem weeds as well. A lot, we're seeing a lot more annuals. If you look at something like this, you know, this is lamb's quarters here. Uh, you know, it's competing with the crop. It's right yeah. at that first trifoliate stage. Um, you you know, you can see something like lamb's quarters, you have that waxy calcium deposit on here. And, and that's where it's really important to get out there and scout because this waxium calcium deposits can actually inhibit the uh, spray droplets and not allow it to penetrate uh, these weeds. So something like lamb's quarters, really hardened off, it's gonna be really difficult to control, especially in some of those uh, IP soybeans. Yeah, now you got ragweed here, um, there's some pigweed here. What's, what's the strategy moving through this field and fields like this, Rob? Um, uh, Obviously, you want to get some uh, post-emerge products, but maybe even a little residual here for the season. Yep, definitely. So we're starting to see, you know, with the dry conditions, some variable stands, maybe some gaps in that plant. And the soybeans might be a little bit slower to canopy. So, you know, they're going to start flowering in about three weeks from now. So that's where the window is actually closing very quickly in terms of those conventional herbicides that we can apply with residual. So we want to make sure that we provide some of these residual uh, control on some of these weeds into July, because once those those rains do come, we're going to see a big flush of some of these annual weeds, and we might not have that soybean canopy to actually help uh, use that as a method, an effective method of weed control later on. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about application here. Um, one of the things uh, you talk about time of day, and especially for a lamb's core, and how they behave and how you can hit them at the right time. Yep. So it's first thing in the morning here. You know, at overnight, you know, the 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 weeds tend, whether it's lamb's quarters or even some of the other weeds, you know, really start to go more vertical, right? And when it comes to some of those contact herbicides, you know, in the middle of the day, the weeds are out more. So it increases that surface area. So we actually get better activity in the middle of the day when uh, when we go in there to uh, to control some of these ones, and especially for those contact herbicides, the bazagrans and some of those IP soybeans. Uh, also, time of day is important. We like hot, sunny days. It's much better mm -hmm. than, you know, cooler, overcast conditions that we have now. Much better, faster activity on some of those key broadleaf weeds. And watch the temperature. If the temperature starts to get, you know, over that 30 degrees on some of these hardened off weeds, they just basically shut down, right. right? So that's where it's better to spray, you know, mid to late afternoon in those situations. You definitely want to avoid some of those evening applications, but you know, maybe three to five o'clock at night, that's where you uh, that's where you want to target. Mm -hmm. What about surfactants, adjuvants? Big part of the equation here. Yep, for IP soybeans for sure. So, you know, an adjuvant's not an adjuvant, it's not an adjuvant. So we have, you know, there's crop oils, there's non-ionics, there's products like UAN, 28%. Uh, They're actually, you know, on some of the herbicide labels and they're actually required to burn some of that waxy cuticle and that's really beneficial in some of the situations that we have here with the dry conditions. It'll burn that wax cuticle, allow the product to get in to that, uh, that leaf surface and that's where you know you get better ac activity. So if a product does require something like a UAN, that's where you want it this year, use it more on the higher end of the labeled range, but also make sure you add in that crop oil or that non-ionic, whatever's on that herbicide label, you definitely don't want to uh, to miss that this year. Now, Rob, we've got to get out and scout. Um, how important is staging here, you know, from a, from a weeds perspective and a crop perspective? Well, it depends on the herbicide that you're using. So there's some products out there that you actually have to wait for that first trifoliate stage uh, to apply it, just because, you know, you will see that crop response. Whereas other products, you know, you can't apply early on. You want to make sure you time it and try to control those broadleaf weeds first, because those are the ones that are going to be tougher to control. It doesn't matter if it's just IP soybeans, but also in the other herbicide tolerant soybeans as well. In this particular field, you know, if this is IP soybeans, 
There's a mix of broadleaf and, and grasses in here. Control those broadleaves first. Those are the ones that are tougher to control. Those are the ones that are gonna impact yield a little bit more. And watch out for antagonism. You do see some antagonism with, with some products like, uh, like a Bazagran and IP soybeans when you tank mix it with a group one. Sometimes you have to use that, the higher labeled rate of that group one herbicide, or you just don't want to include it at all because there's too much of a, of a crop response. So, you know, this year in this particular situation, we're using higher water volumes, we're using higher adjuvants. We are going to see some crop response on some of those soybeans, but, you know, the beans will grow out of it eventually, uh, especially if we do get some, some moisture to, and those moderate growing conditions. But it's just not the IP soybeans, it's also these herbicide tolerant soybeans as well. So the Extends, the Extend Flex soybeans, the, uh, the Enlist technology as well. You know, we do see some antagonism with the group fours as well as the group one uh, chemistry on some something like a volunteer corn. So it's really important to understand what systems that you're do using. Also watch the environmental conditions because we want to make sure all the products uh, stay on target and set yourself up for success this year. Awesome. Um, some great tips, Rob. Great weed control ideas. Um, thanks for joining me on the Soybean School. Thanks for having me, Bert.